Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to Wednesday Inspiration from North Congregational Church for September the 20th, 2023. We're continuing our trip through the Psalms of David, and we won't get around to all of them, but um, I do want to hit some of the highlights, and today we're probably at the highest highlight. If I said to any one of you, tell me if you know a Psalm of David, or tell me your favorite Psalm, Almost invariably, it would be our psalm of the day today, Psalm 23. That was not always the case. It was not as well known and lifted up a psalm, but in the last 200 years, particularly in North America, it has become a very beloved staple. And for many of us, a source of great comfort. I use it in almost all the funerals that I do. It is often recited or said or sung. And I've got some musical setting from the the, the uh, from the 23rd Psalm, as well as some words from another version of the 23rd Psalm used as a hymn. We have quite a few in our hymnal, and when you go through a whole collection of hymnals, it is very often sung. What is it about this psalm that makes it so popular? I think it is reassuring. It is paired with Psalm 22, which we read last week, which is all about, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is about the distance of God. Psalm 23 comes around and it's about the closeness of God. And for us as Christians, Psalm 23 also calls to mind as we think about the shepherd, the shepherd boy who became king, the shepherd king David. We also think about Jesus in John's gospel saying, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd loves the flock. The good shepherd watches the sheep. The good shepherd protects and cares for the sheep. So much of the same language. So our understanding of God incarnate, Jesus, is that this 23rd Psalm reflects the way that, that ideally we and our, our Creator would relate to one another. So first let's hear it in the New Revised Standard Version. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So this psalm, I think, addresses some of our deepest needs, our need to be loved, our need to know that we have safety, our need to know that in our darkest time we are not alone. We are accompanied not just by just anyone, but by God, by our Creator, by the loving hand that made the earth and everything in it. And it is a psalm of trust. It's a psalm of dedication. It is, um, the, the, the study Bible calls it an expression of confidence in God's protection, a song of trust. And so we have this affirmation about the Lord is my shepherd. Now, we don't see shepherds all so often, although as a knitter, I follow shepherds. And I can tell you that the uh, shepherds I follow, there's one in particular, a wing and a prayer farm. That shepherd loves her sheep. She cares for them. Every one of them is named. She knows each one of them by sight, and they know her. When she walks into the field, even before she pulls out animal crackers, their favorite treat, or starts getting out hay, they run up to her, and what they want to be is touched by her, is petted by her, is held by her. When they're having lambs, she goes and sits with them all night while the lambs are born. When things are difficult, when they're sick, she brings them into her home and tends for them tenderly. She cares for these sheep. They're the sheep of her flock. She is their shepherd, and she loves them dearly, and they love her. And this is the, this is the thing that we're really expressing here, is this mutuality of love, that the shepherd is not someone who just says, I have these little creatures, and somewhere off there, they're valuable to me. Instead, there is a loving kindness. So my Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, would be a familiar thing to the time of David and even the time of Jesus. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. So still waters would be waters that are not flowing, but instead are calm, 
or serene, a pond, a farm pond, a, a, a watering place where there is no threat of, of current or of slippery rocks, but instead, like the green pastures, is just available and free for the needs to be met. He restores my soul. So now we're not talking about sheep anymore, are we? We're talking about us. We're talking about how the green pastures and the still waters are a metaphor for how God restores us, how God refreshes us. Don't you even feel a calmness hearing about? He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. So the shepherd is one who can be trusted, can be trusted to care for you, even when you're not sure, even when sometimes that little hook has to be used. And when my shepherd that I follow at the wing in the prayer farm has to move her sheep, they have to have someone beside the gate with a little hook just to catch those sheep that are str strolling off, that are going the wrong way, that are not going in the right paths, that are not going where the good food will be, and just hook them back in, not to drag them, but just to oomph, urge them back in to the place they should be. It's fun to watch. And then there is this line, this line that even in different translations, I just can't give up. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So even in our darkest hour, we have that song, Jesus walked a lonesome valley, had to walk it by himself. Part of the story of Jesus that is most important for us as Christians, now not David who lived before the Christian era and yet is still one of God's people and part of the story of God and people is that even in the valley of the shadow of death, God is with us. When we are going to our own death, when we are in the darkest valley, the darkest place, when we feel no love, no light can get in, also times when we are surrounded by death. So I have often said to families who are grieving a loss, you are right now in the valley of the shadow of death. People who are caring for a loved one who is dying and they're feeling this, this sorrow and this loneliness are in the valley of the shadow of death. But you don't have to fear any evil, even in the valley of the shadow of death, because God is with you. And the rod and the staff, as I mentioned about the sheep being brought into the fold, the rod and the staff corral us, bring us in, let us know that the shepherd's hand is there and will not let us wander, but instead will care for us. And then the psalmist says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. How interesting is that? A table prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. So even in the midst of all sorts of difficult things, God is providing for your needs. God is not just giving you some scraps to feed or making sure you don't go without, but to prepare a table, to give a spread. Hospitality is at the core of, of God faith, of the God faith of the Bible. Welcoming the stranger, welcoming even those we aren't sure we love, welcoming even the enemy. And so God's hospitality is extended to everyone. In the presence of your enemies, there is still hospitality. And in the presence of your enemies, you can still find God's hand at work. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. So anointing with oil is a form of blessing giving, and so is an overflowing cup. The blessing of having not just enough, but more than enough, of having abundance. And what we are called to have in our life with God is abundance. Abundance in the green pastures, abundance in the still waters, abundance of the cup overflowing, abundance of the oil of blessing running down us, abundance even in the valley of the shadow of death. God is abundantly there for us. And so with David, we can say, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. It's just a beautiful, beautiful psalm. And the, the interpretations of it, the various versions, the various translations, don't deduct from it because honestly, this is just one of those really perfect poems, those really perfect blessings that exists. And it comes in such a place in the life of David, who had both the ups and the downs, who was within God's will and outside of it, who was con in line with how God wanted him to be as king and also very much apart from it, who committed grave and desperate sins and yet turned to God for forgiveness and found forgiveness.
And even though David's life wasn't perfect, even though David was not a perfect king, even though David's kingdom was racked by civil war towards the end of his life, even though David's kingdom did not continue in the way that God had first established it still, David is blessed, blessed by God to say, your line will never fail, and through you I will redeem the earth. And that prayer, that that thing continues. So we have Jesus being born to Mary and Joseph, who was of the house and lineage of David, was a Benjamite from Bethlehem. I'm sorry, from Nazareth, but who came back to Bethlehem to the home of Jesse, the father of David, to the home of David, to the place where it all has been beginning over and over again. And so God brings us back also to the place where it is always beginning over and over again. I'm going to read to you the words from our New Century hymnal because this is a hymn. The first Sunday that I was um, serving at North Church, I had just been called as the associate. Now I am the senior, but at that time I had been called as the associate minister. And we sang this hymn and I had not heard it before. And when I got to the end of it, I looked at the lay reader of the day who was sitting next to me with just a look of amazement at how much it had struck my heart. So here are these words. My shepherd is the living God. I therefore nothing need. In pastures fair, near pleasant streams, you settle me to feed. You bring my wandering spirit back when I forsake your ways and lead me for your mercy's sake in paths of truth and grace. When I walk through the shades of death, your presence is my stay. A word of your supporting breath drives all my fears away. Your hand in sight of all my foes does still my table spread. My cup with blessing overflows. Your oil anoints my head. The sure provisions of my God attend me all my days. O oh, may my house be your abode and all my work be praise. There would I find a settled rest while others come and go. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child at home like a child at home. That is how we are to trust God. That is the care from the God for whom we have waited. That is the care that God desires to offer us. That is the care that sometimes in our foolishness we forsake when we wander, when we stray. And yet God's love is always waiting to bring us back home again and again. We live in the light of God's love, of God's grace, reconciliation, and compassion. So now I'm going to play Pat Butler at the North Church organ playing Brother James Eyre, which is another set setting of the, the uh, 23rd Psalm. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He maketh me to lie in pastures green, leadeth me the silent waters by. And then we will be back and we'll have a time of prayer to God who is our good shepherd, who loves us, who calls us by name, who cares about each and every sheep.
<sighs> so beautiful. So beautiful. Now, you know, I just couldn't go without, just even begin to pray without using Psalms for Praying version of Psalm 23. It did not need much adaptation because it is itself just such a glorious prayer and such a way for us to come to our maker, to our love, to the good shepherd. Psalm 23. Oh, my beloved, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You bring me to green pastures for rest and lead me beside still waters, renewing my spirit. You restore my soul. You lead me in the path of goodness to follow love's way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow and of death, I am not afraid, for you are ever with me. Your rod and your staff, they guide me. They give me strength and comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of all my fears. You bless me with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the heart of the beloved forever. Let us pray. O oh God, gracious God, good shepherd, you are the shepherd and we are the sheep of your pasture. We are prone to wander. Like sheep, we need direction, we need care. Like sheep, we cannot survive if we are not tended. Like sheep, we are so conformed to the work of the master that without the master, we would perish. But we do not perish, God, because of you, because of your lo loving care, because of your tenderness, because of your forgiving love that brings us back over and over again, because of the ways that you nurture us into the qualities that you would have us show forth of grace and reconciliation and compassion. And so lift those up in our hearts, O oh God. Every time we hear this psalm, help us to be refreshed in spirit, not just for selfish reasons, but also for the sake of your world. Because this world desperately needs all of us who can live according to the pathway of the Good Shepherd. So guide us, Lord, as we seek to love and care for one another, as we seek to care for our neighbors as we would want to be cared for, as we seek to use your standards of love and acceptance instead of our standards of judgment and qualification. And so, O oh God, in that spirit, we pray for all your people everywhere, for the poor and the hungry, the homeless, the helpless, the hopeless. Bring hope to them. Bring help. Bring care. Where people's lives have been shattered apart by natural disasters such as earthquake and tornado and fire of terrifying occurrences, O oh God, send help. Bless those who go as helpers and bless those of us to support the helpers as they seek to feed and care for people in places of disaster and in places of war. O oh God, we do not love war. May it cease, but also may your people never stop defending the cause of righteousness, the cause of freedom, the things that will help your people live in the fullness of life instead of in the fear of oppression. So, O oh God, help us to do works of fullness of life. Works of fullness of life for one another, works of fullness of life as we approach and care for the sick, for those who are ailing and failing. Fullness of life as we tend to the needs of our family and friends. Fullness of life as we examine our own lives, as we think about the own ways we ourselves live, as we contemplate how you would have us be. Oh God, sometimes we are so hard on ourselves and it makes us hard on others. And so refresh us in the green pastures, refresh us by the still waters, refresh us by nourishing us at your table, refresh us with your blessings so that we may see that we are not strangers or guests in your eyes, but you are, we are your children at home. Oh God, as we watch the shepherds, as we think about Jesus, the good shepherd, we are stirred to our very souls to want to be better, better people. So help us to see one another with the same eyes of love that you have and show us how we may love the sheep of your pasture, even our fellow sheep, even those when they go astray. Help us to see your correction, not as a rod for beating, but instead of as a shepherd's crook for guiding us through the gates where we must go and for being with us and showing us your care. Nourish us so that we may truly live with one another as all your children at home. And that is the promise that we have from Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you're interested, you can find the shepherd that I referred to at her blog site, wingandaprayerfarm.com. Just the whole one, wingandaprayerfarm.com. Her name is Tammy. She's delightful. She has stories about her sheep. Um, if you follow her on Instagram, she'll have up pictures of sheep grazing, birds singing, of flowers growing, of things that will make you remember the Good Shepherd. So I encourage you to look at that, but never, never to fail to see how much that shepherd loves her sheep and begin to understand that that is just a pale reflection to how the Good Shepherd, our Father God, loves us. And so may you go in the love and care of the Good Shepherd this day and every day. And God be with you until we meet again.